Okay, let's talk about classes in JavaScript. So uh, part of ES6 was the addition of some keywords around classes. Now these were introduced as a syntactical sugar. So they're really just wrapping around what JavaScript already does. They've added them to the language to help out people who are coming in from other languages who are used to using classes. Now JavaScript is not a class-based language. It is a prototype-based language. But we have a lot of the keywords these seven words right here which allow us to appear like we're building classes so people who are used to that um, mental approach to programming can continue to do the same sort of thing so our keywords class extends constructor super get set and static these are the ones that we're going to be talking about here today so I have a very simple example class right now and I'm just going to run it once there so we can talk about the results. So to create a class, you're basically, you're, it's like you're defining an object, the, the description or the blueprint for an object. In JavaScript, it's like you're building the prototype. There is a constructor function, and it uses the keyword constructor. So inside your class, you want to have, typically, one method called constructor. And you can optionally pass in arguments to this and then do whatever you like inside there. Now the class constructor, this is what you would get if you were normally writing your JavaScript and you were saying new something and that new thing that you were creating, that's the constructor that you're calling when you say new. So down here, same thing. You have a variable, you say it's equal to new and then the name of the class convention is that you start the name with a capital letter. You can pass in the parameter if you need a parameter for it. So I'm defining a vehicle here. It's got a constructor. I'm going to create the vehicle. When I say new vehicle, that's going to create an object, pass it back. This variable car will represent that object. The number four got passed into this variable. And then using the keyword this, what I have done is I have created a property for this one right here. This car that I just created with new vehicle. So I could do this. I could do car, car one, car two. I have now created three car objects. Each one of them, when I say this, I'm talking about the individual car that I just created. So I can pass in two or I can pass in six passing in different values if I was to say car dot wheels I'm accessing this property right here so car dot wheels now that's the next method that we have in here I'm using the keywords get and set with wheels this is the property that I'm accessing by putting get and set in front of it I'm creating a getter or a setter which means Basically, I've got a property and I want to control how the people can access that variable. So, get wheels returns this dot num wheels. This dot num wheels is what we set in the constructor. Set wheels, we pass in a new value and we're overwriting it. So, in, when we are um, writing the code outside of the class, we could say car dot wheels equals seven completely unrealistic number run that again now seven is the number that we're getting here we created the car we passed in four the four was put into the variable num wheels which belonged to this variable right here this instance of the class car one car two these are other instances of the class vehicle there's also a static keyword. Now the difference with the get set and static keywords that we're putting in front of these method names, we can also create um, methods that have nothing in front of them. This is just like creating a function in normal JavaScript. You're creating a function inside of an object. Uh, you just don't have to put the word function here. You just write the name of it. So just like a function. So if you're coming from JavaScript, if this is your first introduction to classes, you can build functions inside of your object called vehicle. 
Uh, you just don't need to put the word function in front of it. But it's doing the same sort of thing. Now, the static keyword that I mentioned earlier, these are shared. So static, if you're familiar with classes, if you've worked with other languages that have classes, you've likely used static. This method right here, wheels, these two methods, when we are doing this, dot wheels, dot wheels, we're calling on these methods. So the, the get wheels method is what we're calling. We put car in front of it because that's the instance that we want to access to get the value of wheels. With vehicle, now we're talking about static. So the name of the class itself, this method and this method, accelerate and decelerate, these are shared by every single one of these cars. So every one of them has just a pointer to these. So it's like these are on the prototype. If you're familiar with the prototypes in JavaScript, these two objects or these two methods are on the prototype object. So when you say that you want to access it, when I say vehicle, what I'm really talking about is the prototype for car. All right, now extends, that's the other keyword that we haven't talked about, and super, we haven't talked about those two. So let's just do a quick example of those. I want to now create a class called uh, car. We'll say it's with a capital C, and we can say it extends vehicle. I have to spell it right. There we are. What that means is that the class car, or the object that we're creating called car, is going to borrow things from vehicle. So it wants to share some of the things that are inside of here. It wants to have a wheels get and set method. It wants to be able to access this constructor. It wants to be able to use these static methods. So when we extend vehicle, it means that the vehicle is the prototype of car effectively. If you're used to JavaScript, that's what we're doing. Now, uh, inside of here, again, we would create a constructor. Inside the constructor method, this is the one that would be called if I did this. So let's say let Ferrari equal new car. There. Now, what we're doing by calling car is we're calling this constructor right here. New car means call the constructor inside the class car. By calling super, what I'm doing is I'm calling the constructor of whatever I'm extending. In this case, we're extending vehicle. So up inside vehicle, this constructor, that's what we're calling when we call super. Now, it required a parameter, wheels. So let's do that. Let's pass in a number of wheels as well. So let's pass in four. That'll come in here. Let's call it wheels again. And then we're going to pass that variable up to super. Great. Uh, I'm also going to add a method called info so we can write out all the information that's inside of there. Now let's pass in a few more things. Let's pass in uh, a make, a model. Let's do that. That's good enough. So we're passing in these four things. The number of wheels, the make, the model, and the year. Those things need to be passed into the constructor function. So we'll create a variable for each one. Now I'm putting the underscores on here just to make sure that they are different than if I use the variable make or model inside of here. I want to make sure that uh, I don't have any conflicts. I can tell just by the fact that it's the underscore, it's that it's something that's local to this method, it's something that I'm passing in here. And then we can say this dot make equals make. We'll do the other two. So I'll create a property called model, we'll create one called year, model, and year. There we are. Okay, now my info method. What I want to do with this is just write out a single line that says, um, let's say the, the Ferrari Testarossa um, has four wheels and was made in 1985. Something like that. 
So console.log the this dot make this dot model. You'll notice here that I'm just accessing the properties directly here. This dot make this dot model. I'm just getting the values. I'm not calling a getter or setter methods like we did up here. So these are optional. You don't have to do this. You do not have to create a get or a set method to access the variables. If you want, you can just leave them open like this. Uh, so the Ferrari Testarossa was made in, and we'll add this dot year, and has wheels. There we go. Now we can call that. So Ferrari, this is the instance of the car class. So because it's an instant, instance, the keyword this is referring to this particular object. So I can say Ferrari.info and I'm calling that method. There we are. So the Ferrari Testarossa was made in 1985 and has four wheels. Great, that worked. Now, wheels, this dot wheels. You'll notice that we did not create a variable here. We didn't say this.wheels. But this.wheels, there is a wheels getter and setter up inside the parent. And because we called super, and because we said extends, we get to use this. We've passed it up to here, so we now have a wheels variable that we can access. That's why this worked. And from the car, we can also call the accelerate method because we're extending the vehicle again. So we can say car.accelerate. There we are. And there's the go faster happening here. We can do it a whole bunch of times. Clear it. Run it again. There we are. So we're able to access vehicle.accelerate or car.accelerate. Car got access to the vehicle. The vehicle effectively is the prototype of the car object because the prototype had the accelerate method. We were able to access it. And the wheels we were able to access as well. All right, so there's your seven main keywords. There's the basic concepts of writing the classes in JavaScript. I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments down below. Um, if you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.